Scott Grayson was there for 97.3 ESPN.com. His Grayson's grades are posted after every Eagles game, and he has them up right now for Eagles and Vikings. And I can't imagine that there was anything but A's. Is that it? Just A's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much sums it up, Mike. Yeah, it was uh... – I sat there trying to write the grades. You know how I – I mean, we've talked about this before in some blowout they've had, and I'm just like, God, I, I really can't find much to fault these guys with in a, in a performance like that. It was just – you know, nobody saw that coming, that's for sure. Um, obviously, Nick Foles would be at the top of that list. He played maybe – some people believe that's the best game that he's ever played, and he has a seven-touchdown game in his uh, on his uh, resume, resume there. Yeah. Um if it wasn't Foles, which guy really stood out to you to say, wow, I mean, what a game this guy had that you weren't maybe expecting? You know, I, I'm going to go with – I'd probably go with uh, Chris Long. I mean, you know, his impact, he was frequently getting into, um, you know, Case Keenum's face there. And, and, and I think there was no bigger play in the game than Patrick Robinson's interception. That doesn't happen without Chris Long hitting Case Keenum's arm. And he's just been amazing here. Uh, a huge pickup. Uh, the way he's come into this t- this town, this city, he's embraced this city. Uh, he's a huge presence in the locker room. And he's been a big factor on the field in, in more than just last night's game for sure. And I think that you have to look at him in that one play in general, I think really turned the tide. If you want to say there was a play that – that maybe was the big deciding factor in the game, even though it was so early. I think that was it, and numerous players I talked to last night agreed. Um, it was a big moment in the game. Um, I asked uh, the people on Twitter today, at 973 ESPN, who do you love most today? Nick Foles, Eagles defense, Doug Peterson, or Howie Roseman? Uh, who is the guy that gets the most credit for last night? You know, I th- I found myself numerous times last night thinking about Howie Roseman, um, because and, and it's amazing. I mean, we've all ripped Howie left and right and up and down in the past, and 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 uh, it, just a masterful job on his part this year. I mean, you look at the guys who contributed last night. Jay Ajayi was not here at the beginning of the season. Howie went out and got him. Uh, Chris Long was not here at the beginning of the season. Uh, well, he was here at the beginning of the season, but he went and got him in the off season. Um, and, and you look at some of the, the other guys that that made big plays. Um, Torrey Smith, Alshon Jeffrey, Nick Foles, for that matter, wasn't even here. They let Chase Daniels go and brought in Nick Foles. Um, and, and they've weathered the storm through all these injuries, and it's been really impressive. And you look at Carson Wentz and the year he had, well, does he have that kind of year if he doesn't trade Sam Bradford away and Wentz gets 16 games under his belt? I think there's a lot that you can look at that how he had a lot to do with this. And, and you know, it's really a tough choice because I think Doug Peterson – has left his mark here on this team in a major way, and these guys have really enjoyed playing for him. And, and there's this vice versa relationship between coaches and players and players and coaches that has fed off itself and fed off each other throughout the season that has just been a snowball rolling downhill. So, Scott, I was in the stands, section 135, row six, so the Patrick Robinson touchdown came to my end that I know everybody was jumping up and down and hugging each other and all that, but how about the locker room after the game? You were in that locker room. Give us that perspective of what it was like in the NFC champions locker room. Well, it's funny as they were all coming into the locker room from the celebration outside, they were all pretty, pretty tame. And I think it's because they let all their emotion out, out there and they let a little more out in the locker room. But, uh, you know, it was loud in the locker room. The guys, of course, all smiles, but also business-like. I mean, it was a lot like it has been during the regular season with a little bit of a caveat that they won the NFC title and are going to the Super Bowl. I mean, now you take that from some of the guys like a Malcolm Jenkins who was, was remained very business-like and things like that. So a guy like Lane Johnson who was standing there uh, w- with a beer while he was doing interviews and um, and had another one sitting in his locker behind him. So he was definitely taking it in, wasn't going to wait till he was done with the media to start, you know, enjoying what had happened and celebrating. Uh, you know, definitely a, a, a lot of smiles, but these guys, mm-hmm. you know, I, I will say this, they didn't get too high. I, I did not feel like they got too high from it. And that shows the business mentality and, and remaining focus that Doug Peterson has put on these guys and that uh, they're not done. They want one more. And they badly want to get it. And Lane Johnson, as he said, he was 14 when he watched Super Bowl 39. But he knows this city wants this, wants some revenge on New England, and he wouldn't mind taking care of doing that. Scott Grayson with us here. Grayson's great. So 
I know that you mentioned Chris Long, and I think about maybe the impact that Chris Long had on a or has on a Derek Barnett. How do you feel like guys like Chris Long, like Garrett Blunt? How do you think their their impact and how important do you think guys like that are? Guys who have won the Super Bowl just last year. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that is a huge part of when you look to build a locker room. I think you got to make sure you have a decent balance of some veterans who can help the younger guys along. And um, uh, Chris Long and, and LeGarrette Blunt are two veterans who have Super Bowl experience, as you said. And, you know, they also they also have it with the Patriots. So there's that added aspect of it as well as they're going to face their former team. Um, but, you know, they, they have been great and, and they've been unselfish. Um, you know, Chris Long has not been a guy who, who I don't think anybody would ever consider to be selfish in his career. But LeGarrette Blunt, you know, early in the year, there was some talk about is he going to demand more carries. And he's just kind of towed the line. Now, winning has a lot to do with that. No doubt about it. If this team was losing five, six, seven, eight games in the season, I'm sure there would have been some rumbling going on. But, you know, him, Alshon Jeffrey at times wasn't getting a whole lot of targets. He didn't complain. You know, you look at this unselfish nature on this team, and it's been a huge reason why they are where they are and going to a Super Bowl. Scott Grayson uh, was there last night for uh, 97.3 ESPN.com. Check out Grayson's grades at 97.3 ESPN.com after every Eagles game. I like how you broke it down. A plus, A, you know, nobody else. A, just A, a plus, a, 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 a. Nobody else got anything else. Just all A's. But uh, I guess one guy that I want to um, kind of – zone in on uh, on the uh, defensive side of the ball is Fletcher Cox. Now, he's a guy, again, that maybe the stats don't say much, or but last week, unblockable. And last night, again, it, it, he's lived up to that contract that everybody likes to point at the last two weeks. The numbers might not speak for him, but I thought Fletcher Cox, again yesterday, just absolutely wrecked the Minnesota game plan. You're absolutely right, and and I think every time the Eagles have success on defense, nine times out of ten, it starts with Fletcher Cox, you know, wrecking the opponent in the middle of the field. Because when you blow up the interior of the line, it forces the outside of the line to start reacting, and then guys on the outside end up making plays. Um, but at times last night, it was Cox. I mean, look, last week against the Falcons, he was unstoppable, as you said. Last night, he got to Keenum a few times, and what's going to be the key is you play it forward here to get – by the New England Patriots that you got to get in Tom Brady's face. And Fletcher Cox right now is playing at an extremely high level. And if he can get up to Tom Brady like he has been here against Case Keenum and, and uh, Matt Ryan, then, I, you know, I think things are looking good for this defense. But uh, it certainly starts with him. I think, you know, it's great to see that he did get paid and that the organization recognized just how important he is because I really think he's the first domino that falls that allows every other domino on the field to do what it does to be successful. And, you know, he's been, it's been a major impact on this defense for sure. All right. Uh, Scott Grayson, uh, I'm sure, has plenty more coverage for uh, Super Bowl 52. You can follow him on Twitter at sgrayson973 as the Eagles beat the Minnesota Vikings 38-7. to Thanks as always, pal. All right. You got it, Mike.